Schwester, you can um, you can unmute yourself, and I will try to like follow your speech flow. Okay, great. Um, yeah, can I think. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, I think there is some uh, formatting differences, but um, I can go forward. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah, um, thank you so much for uh, inviting me for this discussion. Um, and I am very, very grateful to share um, the space with uh, other panelists and Wetek. Um, Love this presentation. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Um, I am Shreshta. I'm um, currently working as a biosecurity researcher at um, Effective Ventures, uh, formerly known as the Center for Effective Altruism. And uh, my involvement in biosecurity has been fairly recent, but um, I would like to give a very brief overview of what the space is about and um, where are we heading. So um, in short, um, towards a safer future um, with biotechnology um, really dates back to how life scientists um, initially interacted with biology. So in the last century, most they mostly focused on discovering um, how biological systems work at various scales. Um, things took a turn when uh, biologists engaged with engineering principles to yield their life science knowledge as a tool. And this transition from acquiring wealth of knowledge um, to using biology as a tool um, gave birth to um, synthetic biology. And um, now in its third decade, synthetic biology tools are massively democratized, uh, affordable and accessible beyond the confines of a traditional laboratory. Uh, for example, today the cost of uh, reading pieces of DNA has reduced by seven orders of magnitude compared to the, cost it uh, compared to the costs um, 20 years ago. And uh, explosion of technological innovation in um, reading, writing, and editing DNA has permitted um, engineering of biological systems at unprecedented rate and resolution. Um, all this innovation coupled with enthusiasm of young people and um, even amateurs who want to enter the field um, really uh, puts synthetic biology in a position to upend the future of medicine, uh, fuel, uh, manufacturing, and agriculture. So um, to give a brief overview of what biosecurity means, um, it would be nice to touch upon what, what biosafety means. And I'm sure most of, most of you are aware of that. But um, to me, this definition makes most sense. Biosafety really is about keeping humans safe from biological agents. Um, which involves wearing the proper uh, personal protective equipment, um, following certain protocols to safely handle um, biological material. Um, and biosafety is mostly inclined towards um, uh, stopping accidental release of biological agents. Whereas biosecurity, on the other hand, is keeping biological agents safe from humans, as in humans with malicious intent. So this includes avoid, um, ways and structures to um, stop deliberate misuse of biological agents at the hands of um, certain actors. Next, please. So uh, just to give a brief context about why should we be worrying about biosecurity, um, I think this is a fairly broad representation of why biosecurity needs more attention. Um, the first image that you see is of um, soldiers who are being trained for um, nuclear, biological, and chemical um, exercises, um, field exercises. So a few studies have found out, um, and this is um, pretty well known as well, um, that in the past, um, 23 countries in the world have had or possibly had a bioweapons program. Uh, 15 of these countries have had confirmed bioweapons program in the past century. And not just states, not just interest of um, countries, but there are also non-state actors um, and also non-state cases where um, a potential bioweapon has caused um, uh, pr uh, problems um, at regional levels, for example, the US postal system anthrax attacks right after 9-11, 
um, the Rajneeshi cult, um, um, uh, 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 food poisoning that happened in 1984, and few more. So um, there is significant states and non-state interest in development of bioweapons, which is one of the reasons we need to be more, um, we need to think more about biosecurity. Um, secondly, the second image is of um, the city of Swedal, uh, Sw Swedalosk. Uh, sorry, I'm not the best at pronouncing Russian uh, cities. Um, so this is, uh, so the city of uh, Sweden lost in 1979, I guess, faced the largest documented outbreak of human inhalation anthrax, human inhalation of off anthrax. Um, and this was, um, and studies later um, figured out that this anthrax was basically um, emitted from a military microbiology facility of the Soviet Union and was, was a result of faulty air ventilation system. So even if uh, uh, we feel, you know, like states have uh, countries and uh, states have um, capacity to um, control um, the kind of uh, biological research that they're doing, we also have had examples in, uh, in history where um, uh, accidental release has not been, um, um, ha has, has happened even from states facilities. And finally, the last two images are, um, representative of how, um, I think the slides are uh, still the same, Karina. Um, um, so the last two images in, um, yeah, you might have to scroll up, yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, so um, this is a snapshot of um, how a research group came up, uh, reconstituted the genome of smallpox. So eradicating smallpox, as we know, um, one of the deadliest diseases in history, took humanity decades and costed billions of dollars. But bringing this virus back uh, really just took a small scientific team with little uh, specialized knowledge, uh, half a year and about um, $100,000. So they reconstituted the smallpox uh, genome and uh, virus and that sort of uh, wreaked havoc in the early 2010. And similarly, the image below is that of, of H5N1 virus. So H5N1 is a type of avian, avian influenza virus that occurs naturally in various birds, but has, but has also surfaced, surfaced in humans in the last decade. Although human cases are rare, um, um, Recently, in the last decade, uh, a group of scientists um, actually uh, mutated uh, the virus in a way which made it easily transmittable amongst uh, mammals. So um, these two examples are examples of um, researchers not um, uh, being thoughtful with their uh, scientific endeavor and uh, potentially causing information hazard, which means putting something out there which could be used by malicious actors uh, in ways that it was not intended initially. So basic, these biosecurity failures are often, uh, are mostly not failures of technology, but like failures in the surrounding human systems um, that we haven't developed um, with the um, advances of technology. Next, please. Um, yeah, and this really is my final slide. Uh, although there is a lot to worry, um, we also have um, a lot of um, endeavor which takes us towards a safer future with biotechnology. And I am, I have really just cherry picked examples of uh, policy interventions at national, regional, and global level. So at national level, we have a very prominent example of um, the U.S. government coming up with. Uh, uh, enhanced potential pandemic pathogen framework and a dual use research of concern um, framework that is now being revised um, by taking inputs from public health expert, policy researchers, and so on and so forth. Similarly, the Africa CDC um, has uh, put together a very strategic plan as to how they would develop um, their biosecurity um, infrastructure in the next five years. Um, in the next three years now. Um, and finally, the Biological Weapons Convention is um, the treaty, the, the disarmament treaty, the first disarmament treaty um, that came together uh, for states and countries to sign 
um, to agree that uh, the the signatory parties basically won't be stockpile won't be involved in stockpiling development or spread of biological weapons. Although each of these uh, endeavor um, have their own um, uh, limitations, but at least we have uh, we are moving in the right direction. Although this is an overview of policy interventions, but biosecurity also includes um, technical work in, such as improving uh, medical countermeasures, um, developing early detection systems, finding less risky way uh, to answer a certain scientific questions, uh, differential development of certain technologies uh, versus others, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's it. Uh, and I'm, uh, Again, very thankful for this invitation and being able to present.